Now let's talk accessories. First, we're gonna talk about cases, followed by docks and keyboards, and then AV inputs and extras. Our first category is cases, and as anybody knows, if they've ever looked around on Newegg.com or any other website that sells techno gadgetry, there are hundreds of cases for various needs, which is why I don't even really have a case, to be honest, but I see all these different types of cases around all over the place. When I teach my iPad classes, I see every shape, size, and variety. What you need to understand about the cases are, well, first of all, if you have the old iPad, the iPad 1, the cases are actually going to fit differently and you need to make sure that you're not accidentally buying an iPad 1 case when you actually want it for the new iPad or for the iPad 2. So now that you've settled on and made sure that you're buying the right kind of case, there are a few things to think about and remember. One is that the magic cover for the iPad 2 actually turns the screen on and off. So as it comes on and off, it actually turns it on and off. So if that bothers you or if that's a nicety, make sure that you either do or don't have it. The other part is a lot of cases when they flip back, make sure that there's an ergonomic tip to your iPad. So as you're typing, let's say, if you're typing on your iPad, you want it to be at a level that you desire. So some of them only give you one single pitch, like a 15 degree, but others will give you different pitch levels to be able to play with. My highest recommendation is to go into a store, ask if you can take the case out of a box, find it, look through it, make sure that the case is exactly the way you want it, and then buy it online for cheaper. That's probably my best recommendation as far as cases are concerned. The next category is docks and keyboards. Docks and keyboards are almost as simple and almost as varied as cases. And in fact, you're going to find out that keyboards can be completely integrated with the cases. But there are a few things that you need to consider as you are considering your cases. Remember that 30 pin port here on the back? Some of your docks and keyboards actually plug right into that 30 pin port, which means that not only are you docking it to your keyboard so that you can type and interact with your iPad, but you're charging it at the same time and potentially syncing it with a computer. Now with iCloud, the ability to sync over Wi-Fi, that's a little bit less important, but it's still something to think about when you're considering to buy a keyboard. One of the other things that you need to consider as you are thinking about a keyboard and or a docking station are the size of the keyboard. Obviously, some people just love having that full-size keyboard. Well, obviously, if you're going to get a case that has the integrated keyboard, which there are plenty of cases out there where you can buy the case, and when you flip the case open, you actually have a keyboard built inside, but the iPad is not a full keyboard length wide, so if you have a keyboard that is integrated into a case, you are not going to get that functionality or that full-size keyboard. So if you are really looking for the full size, you may need to get one that is not incorporated into your case. The last thing that you need to think about is that any keyboard that is wireless is actually going to be a Bluetooth connection. There are three different types of inputs going in and out of this iPad that we took a look at in a different lecture. One is Wi-Fi, one is data, and the other one is Bluetooth connectivity. And all those keyboards that you can buy have to be connected via Bluetooth so if you need to know how to set up that keyboard, it should come with a little user manual, but if it doesn't or you get confused, you need to go into your general settings and you can revisit those parts of the videos that show you how to set up or work with Bluetooth things in your general settings. So that's basically it for the keyboards and the docks. It's really simple, either it's 30 pin or it's not, or it's Bluetooth, which means that it's connected, and it's either connected or integrated into your case, or it's not. Once again, make sure that you look all around the internet for some of the best deals and make sure that you're not buying something that is for an alternate device like a tablet or some other thing like an Apple iPad 1 and that it's specified for your version of your iPad. Let's move on to AV. AV is simple, it's audio video. And almost every AV part of the iPad comes out through you're probably sick of me saying this, but the 30 pin port in the back. So in other words, a connector similar to this is going to pop in here and it's going to spit out either audio or video in some way, shape or form, or at least video coming out of the 30 pin. Your audio is going to come out of the audio jack. 
So the different types of connectors that you need to consider go from 30 pin to VGA, which is the standard thing that you're going to find in the back of something like a projector. Many computers have those and you would probably recognize those and we have a little screenshot probably on the screen right now for you to look at. Or you can get something that goes from 30 pin to HDMI and HDMI is only on the back of some of the newer projectors. This one does have it, but make sure that you look to see if your projector has an HDMI output or input rather before you go and buy the HDMI converter for your iPad. Now you might be wondering what in the world do I need an AV out for? Well if you ever plan on doing any kind of presentation or having students do presentations or if you plan on showing anything from your iPad on a larger screen or on a television that's exactly what you're going to need. You're going to need that converter to go from 30 pin to VGA or 30 pin to HDMI so that you can project or mirror whatever you're doing on the iPad. If for some reason you have the old iPad 1, you may not have all those options because a lot of what you see on the screen does not come out through that VGA signal. Enter the document camera. Document cameras are, can be extremely expensive, but if you go with something simple like this, you can get them for as cheap as about $50 to $60. And you can just set these up right over the top of your iPads and you can just capture anything that you do on the iPad and project it up onto a screen through a computer. So if you're using a smart board or just a projection screen, you can certainly capture just about anything you're doing. One more advantage to having a document camera instead of coming out through a VGA, like through the 30 pin here, is that you can actually see your finger doing the work and showing what you want on the iPad. So if you're doing iPad tutorials of some sort, the document camera might actually be a decent way to go. The very final thing that I want to take you through, the AV behemoth here, is the Apple TV. The Apple TV is a way to wirelessly, no longer do I have to plug anything into this iPad at all, not into the AV jack or the headphone jack, not into the 30 pin at all. Everything goes wirelessly from the iPad to the Apple TV. Once you turn this Apple TV on, all you have to do is go through the general settings and make sure that this is on the same exact Wi-Fi network as this. So they need to be on the same SSID, whether you're at home or in your classroom or at your work, they need to be on the same exact network. Once that happens, you'll be able to click on your iPad, swipe over and hit the AirPlay button, and it will connect and mirror out through this. The problem with this iPad or Apple TV rather, is that it only has HDMI out. So, like I said before with the projector, you need to make sure that your projector has the ability to go from this HDMI cable right here out of the Apple TV into your projector. Or, some of your projectors may have what's called DVI, and that, that connector looks a little bit like a VGA, but it's a little bit bigger and it's a little more sophisticated, it takes digital video out, so you can convert from HDMI to DVI. In fact, you can just go online and look up HDMI to DVI converter and you'll get a cable that will plug in here and then plug into the back of your projector potentially. And like I said, the brilliance is all of a sudden you have the flexibility to walk around your entire classroom and you can wirelessly transmit anything on your screen to the Apple TV. And the Apple TV does more than just mirror the images on your iPad. You can go on Netflix and do all kinds of other things including surf around the internet a little bit as well. So it's not just a tool for the iPad only. This runs about $100. The last thing that I want to talk about are camera connector kits. Camera connector kits, again, plug into the 30 pin. They are little tiny cartridges that you probably see as a snapshot in this video right now. And what you can do is you can plug an SD card in from your camera or you can plug in your camera directly through USB into here and you can just dump photos back and forth. Unfortunately, you cannot use those camera connectors to just dump any kind of files. You can't dump Word documents or PowerPoints or other files into or pull them out of your iPad. You can only do photo files back and forth. So that's why it's called the camera connector kit. That's the basics of the AVs and ins and outs of taking images, photos, and audio in and out of your iPad. Now let's take a look at input accessories. 
Input accessories are extremely simple and there are very few of them, so this will be rather short. The iPad allows you to, as you may know, to touch interact with the screen. Some people, however, would prefer that they are able to use what's called a stylus. It's basically a pen that you can then interact with the iPad. This is a stylus, and not all styluses come with a cable, actually. Some of them are just wireless, and they just have a simple end to them, and you can write on or interact with the iPad. Others, like this Doseri uh, s stylus here, plugs into the audio jack over here, the headphone jack, and what it does is it takes the electrostatic charge out of your hand so that when you put your hand on the iPad it doesn't activate it so you can set your hand down and still illustrate or draw. And actually it comes with if you have the Doseri software and there are other software applications out there and other styluses that do similar things, it has an eraser on the back so you can draw from the front and erase on the back. Don't expect to run out and get a stylus however to do any kind of input that is much more finite than your finger because it has a location activation built into the screen that is only as sensitive as it's ever going to be and your finger does almost as good a job as the pen itself and then you'll find out when you go to buy the styluses they usually have a pretty fat tip on the end of them but it is what it is and if you prefer to hold something instead of using your finger Go out and get yourself one of these for about 20 bucks. That's your own preference. Otherwise, continue using your finger. And if you're an artist, you can certainly use a pen like this. Or they even have clever gloves that you can wear where the top two fingers uh, are exposed so that when you set your hand down, that electrostatic charge doesn't go through and you can still use your finger to illustrate. So if you're an illustrator, artist, you may want to look into a stylus and or one of those specialized gloves for your input. That was the long and the very short. Of inputs. Now on to the final category of accessories, all the extras. The world of extras for iPads is relatively small right now but it's expanding and expanding and you can find more and more useful tools or quirky tools or fun tools to use in conjunction with your iPad. One of them for example is something like a monitor. A baby monitor in this case can be turned into uh, a monitor for your house that you can then uh, use as a security monitor as, or as an observation monitor in your classroom. And ones like this, in fact, actually have software that go with them so that you can control this monitor back and forth. You can turn it 360 degrees around, 180 up and down, and it's even triggered by light sensitivity, sound, and the like. So you can do all kinds of creative things with this. There are other accessories also where you can get uh, a sketching tablet that goes around the outside of this and it comes with an application piece of software again or comes with an app rather that you can write over the top and has a little protective covering for you and it comes with this software that teaches a kid how to draw and the reason why it has a, a cover around the outside is because the iPad is almost too small for some little tiny kids to hold on to or to handle and it gives them an extra handle to hold on to while they draw on it. I think you sort of see that there are all kinds of bizarre things out there, that, but you may find a lot of them very useful. The best thing that you can do is just go to Google and type in iPad accessory, or if you can dream it up, it may be there. In fact, there's even foot pedals that you can use for the iPad that will do page turns for your PowerPoints, or if you're doing music notation, you're a music conductor, there are foot pedals that will actually turn the pages for you designed specially for the iPad or the iPhone. So there's almost any kind of accessory that you can dream of, but they're wide and there's a variety of them out there and you just need to look for them and be cognizant and be aware, look at blogs and Google search till your heart's delight. That ends the extras for accessories and it ends all of our accessories out there. Bottom line is, there's a lot of thinking that you need to do. Make sure that you put some time and effort into making sure that you get exactly what you want before you buy it and before you use it. The end.